Appreciate that good singing this morning. It's blessed our heart. Good to be in the Lord's house once again. If you're visiting with us, we're glad you're here. If you're visiting by internet, we're always glad to have you as well. So, this is the day the Lord has made. We're to rejoice and we're to be glad in it. I'm thankful that I'm still uh, on this side of eternity. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm ready for the other side if that's what the Lord's will is, but I'm thankful I'm on this side right now as well. Uh, I like that song they sing, God's got land on both sides of the river. I'm his on both sides, so I'm thankful for that. Glad you're able to be here. A few announcements let me make. The WMU will meet tomorrow here at 11 o'clock. All you ladies are invited to attend. That's tomorrow at 11 here at the church, all of you ladies. We had a good turnout Friday night for the basketball. Appreciate all of you making your way out and uh, participating in that. Glad nobody got hurt too bad. And uh, anyway, glad you're able to be here today. Tuesday morning, don't forget the Bible study at 10 o'clock. Wednesday night, we'll have choir practice at 6.30. Now listen, next Sunday, there will be an all-men's choir. Next Sunday, an all-men's choir. But this Wednesday night, we're going to let the whole choir practice. And all these men that ought to be singing in the choirs going to come practice with you. How's that? So remember that. That'll be this Wednesday night. Then our Bible study at 7 o'clock. Our youth Bible study and activities also at 7 o'clock. Next Saturday at 10 o'clock is the women's Bible study. Remember that. Tonight at 6 p.m., we will be having our ordination service for Brother Chris Martin. He's been called to pastor Oak Grove Baptist Church up here in Cana, Virginia. It's at 6 o'clock tonight. You're invited to attend. He would love for all of you to come if you can. I'm going to give you directions how to get there. Now, if you want to go a different way, that's totally okay. There's ways you can go. The best and simplest way I can tell you is go right up North Main Street here in Mount Airy. And keep on North Main. It will turn into Ward's Gap. And just keep following Ward's Gap Road. I'll go ahead and give you a landmark. From here at Ollie's up to there, it's about 11 miles. But you're going to come to a great big fork in the road. Orchard Gap goes left. Do not take that. <laughs> Blossom something goes right. Do not take that. There is a little road that turns to your left. Right before you get to the fork. Hard left. Hard left. Before you get to the fork. You cannot miss this fork. You cannot miss it. Hang a left before you get to the fork. That's supposed to be Ward's Gap Road. I don't know as it's marked. But go out that road about a mile. You can't miss it. It looks like they've cut a bunch of trees off the hill. Going through there. Sawmill's been in there. Go down that road about a mile. And you will see. A driveway to the right. Oak Grove Baptist Church goes right up the hill to the church. So come be with us if you can. Now, if you want to go Epworth Road, Bear Trail Road, if you want to come in from Claw, I, I, you know, you do what you want to. I'm just telling you the simplest way. You'll end up on Ward's Gap sooner or later on one of them to get there. So remember the service tonight. We're looking for a good time in the Lord. Any more announcements that I need to make? Anything I've forgotten? If not, our prayer time, those that we mentioned this morning, also at the top of the list certainly is the lost. If you're here today and you're lost, I wish you would get saved. Yeah. I wish you would get saved. Yeah. J.D. and Marlon, remember them. Mike Estes, Ashley Newman, Connie Hensley, Sky Peel, Luke and Ruth Oakley, Phyllis Tauber, Christy Halstead, Frenchie, Guy Sheets, Adeline Cochran, Samantha, David and Ruth, Betty Cox, Jimmy and Evie Riggs, Larry Slate, 
and I'm a Jean Chilton, Kendra Mosley's grandmother, Patricia Lowe. Are there any that you'd like to add to that list? Yes. this young lady, 16, that's awfully young. Anyone else? If not, David Banks, would you pray for us, please, brother? Thank you, Brother David. Appreciate the good, humble prayer. If you're able, stand with us and turn in your blue hymnal to page 601. I'll fly away. 601. 601. We're going to sing the first and the last verse. 601. <coughs> you ask the blessing on the time and all.
turn with me this morning in your Bible to the book of Ruth once again. Book of Ruth. <coughs> chapter number one. I do ask that you pray for us this morning if you would. Ruth chapter one. I'm going to read verse 16 through 18 and try to bring you a very brief, simple message from God's outline in his word. Trust it will be a help to you. The Bible says in verse number 16, <clears throat> And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. Sound like she's got her mind made up, don't it? Yeah. Hello. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Verse 18. This is Naomi here. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. May God bless this portion from his precious and his holy word. Now we know we, we found out last week that Naomi's found out there's bread back yonder in Bethlehem, Judah. She decides she's going back home. And her two daughter-in-laws, it's all she's got left, Oprah. And Ruth decided they're going back. And we know that one turned. Both of them kissed her, but Orpha turned and went back home. And Ruth clave to Naomi. Now, I've simply titled this message this. And Brother Brian, when you was praying this morning at our 930 time, God always reaffirms things. At least he does to me. And Brian was praying this morning, and right at the end of his prayer, he said, Lord, could somebody come to, know to, come to Jesus? They'd be the best decision they'd ever make in their life. And the title of this message this morning that I'd already put on it is, The Best Decision That Ruth Ever Made in Her Life. Amen. Now, let's find out about this, because we are living in a day and a time today with easy believism. What I'm talking about is there's people say, okay, I, I believe God, so because I believe God and I'm a good person, I'm going to heaven. Then they don't go to church. They don't, they don't bear fruit, Donna, showing that they truly are a Christian. You know, Buck, if I've got to ask you if you're a Christian, something's wrong. Right. There ought to be enough good works coming from our lives that others would know there's a difference in us and that they can know that we're a Christian. Now, we can take this message also and look at it as a message of discipleship. Hello. There's a lot of people want to get saved because they don't want to go to hell, but then they don't want to follow and serve God. I'll amen that. Now, I want to help us right here, and God wants to help us right here through his word. This is God's outline. There are seven affirmative steps to true discipleship. In other words, you can talk it, but honey, let's walk it. Amen. And here's what the Bible says. Go with me through the Word of God. Down through verse number uh, 16, first of all, he, she says, but entreat me not to leave thee. This is Ruth begging, don't make me leave you. I think of Nick Bowles. He's not here this morning. He's with his grandma in church, okay? I just want to let you know. He ain't run off the deep. His grandma wanted him to go to church with him this morning. This is the young man we had the opportunity to lead to the Lord last Friday. Some of y'all don't know this, but last Sunday after the service, he and his wife kept sitting back there, kept sitting back there, kept sitting back there, and didn't leave, wouldn't leave. And after I shook everybody's hands, I come in and I sit down there with him and I said, what's going on? He said, I just don't want to leave. <laughs> Amen. 
hey, when the Lord changes your heart, you get the real goods. And he said, I got to tell you something. He said, I just, he, God, this is going to be amazing to you. And me being a preacher, I said, eh, nothing amazes me with God. He just, he's, I've, I've tried him over and over. He's always proved himself. He said, you had no idea about this, but a friend of mine, uh, come up to me a uh, Saturday just yesterday and I was telling her about how I had got saved and she was a Christian she told me and she apologized unto me because she said she had never really lived a Christian life in front of me hey I already had this message too worked out before all that because God gave it to me and he said uh, you just ain't gonna believe as you was preaching that's what her name was I said I have no idea I said Naomi <laughs> I said no God don't amaze me I mean he's amazing God yeah. But I've seen him work over and over and over and over in many ways. Now here's Ruth. She says, I am going to go with you. She just didn't say it. She put a vow to it. And we find on out later through the book of Ruth, she did just exactly what she said she was going to do. The Bible says it's better to have never made a vow unto God and to make it and break it. She made a vow. And here's that step. Hey, honey, once you are saved and born into the family of God, there ought to be an inward change that will have an outward result. You ought to want to go be with God's people in church. Yeah. Hello, not only in church, but when God's people's fellowshipping and things is going on with the church, you'll want to go and be a part of it. Yeah. Amen. 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 Now let's notice this right here. She did more than just say, I'll go to church with you. Let's look at this. The first step, verse 16. She says, Whether thou goest, I will go. That is simply the first step that you've got to have as a Christian. You've got to be willing to follow God. You've got to be willing to cast the old life away and say, Now I'm just going with God. I like that song the choir sings every now and then. I've traveled a long way, but he said, I think I'll just go with God. Hallelujah. If there's one thing you need to affirm in your heart, Christian, is beyond anything else, uh, become heaven or hell or the highs or the lows or the ups or the downs or the droughts or the floods. You need to make sure that God's leading you and you just going to follow God uh, through every bit of it. Make sure in your mind, first of all, that you're going to go with God because if you're not going to go with God, the rest of this ain't going to do you no good. First thing you got to do, honey, is go with God. I hope you got that one. And it's right there from the Word of God. That's step number one. This is God's outline. It ain't mine. What's the second one? It's also in verse number 16. It says, Whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. What does that mean? It means trusting God. That's a hard thing for a lot of people today. Yeah. We was talking the other Tuesday morning in the Bible study back there, Brother Larry's class, and one of the dear ladies spoke up and says, It's not right to worry. But, you know, what we're flesh. Hmm? Now, maybe y'all are just so much closer to God and stronger in your faith than I am. But if I went to the doctor tomorrow, Don, and he said, you got cancer and it's terminal, I'd probably be worried a little bit. Yeah. I'm just human. You see, the real Joey lives inside of this shell. But the flesh wants to live and do as long as it can. Yeah. I'm in a warfare, the Apostle Paul said. Would it be natural to worry a little bit? Hey, if it's not natural to worry, then why did Jesus all throughout the Word of God come up and say, Peace, peace, peace. He said peace. You know why he said peace? Because they was worried. I I'm glad he's a worrier fixer. She said, where you lodge, I'm going to lodge. Now, here's the thing. She said, I believe God. I trust God. Now, where you lodge, I'm going to lodge. And let me tell you something else about that. <laughs> we as Christians, i got a problem when people, and I'm just telling you, I've got a problem. That's the easy believism thing. i got a problem with people today that tell me they're saved and won't go to church. i got a problem with it. i got a real problem with it. I'm not questioning whether they're saved or lost. But I tell you this, if they are saved, they ain't fellowship with God. Right. I'm just telling you that right quick. 
Hey, when you wake up on Sunday mornings, if coming to Victory Baptist Church and serving God with your church family ain't all that's on your mind, then you got a problem. You got a problem. And let me go ahead and tell you, you might have the first step says, I'll follow you. But like Peter did. <laughs> Peter says, I'll go with you no matter what. Ain't that what he said? And then when they took him to the trial, the Bible says he followed him afar off. Yep. That's how many Christians like to follow today. Afar off. I believe once you get born again, you get right with God. Your priorities will change. Not only are you going to say, I'm going with you, God, I'm going to follow you, but you'll want to lodge up with the right people. Amen. Amen. Be helped to you. Now, here's the next one. Also in verse 16, thy people shall be my people. That's a Westfield version of it. That's fellowship. Hey, if there's ever one thing I've tried to preach throughout the years I've been preaching is that churches need to take this very seriously. They need to consider it very seriously. Fellowship and unity is one of the most important things you'll ever have together as a group of believers. And if the fellowship and the unity is hindered, the worship of God will be hindered. Your life, your personal relationship with God will be hindered. There needs to be unity and there needs to be fellowship in the body of Christ. You say, well, so-and-so don't always agree with me. I didn't say you got to agree to be in fellowship. I didn't, I didn't say you had to agree to be in unity. But the mature Christian will say, okay, if we see something a little bit differently... I'm talking now, hey, if it's different to the Word of God, it's heresy. Right. It's apostasy. But I'm saying as long as we own the same page in the Word of God, me and you might not agree on Blue Patrick. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. When we decided to renovate this church and the committee talked about it and they got the, the, the contractor in here and the decorator in here, this is Joey. The guy that had to come, he said, I would suggest you paint the paneling. Y'all remember it was paneling, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there paneling up there today? Mm -hmm. Thy people shall be my people. I thought we could save a pile of money paint the paneling and it would look good because I have seen paneling painted and if it's painted right, it's pretty. And so did the owner of the company. But others on the committee and the church wanted to sheetrock. So guess what we did? We sheetrocked it. And you know what? Ain't it pretty? <laughs> Ain't it pretty? But did you know there's a whole lot of Christians they say, ah, I wanted the panel, and if they don't paint the pen, and I ain't going to give to it no more, and if they don't do it the way I want to do it, I'll go somewhere else and go, that ain't fellowshipping with God's people. Hey, honey, my mind, I, I'm just telling you how I felt about it. Did any of y'all hear me fuss about it? Did you hear me fuss about it? Not one bit. All I was trying to do was save the church some money, and I thought it looked good. But you know what? I was in favor of whatever the church wanted to do, and the church voted unanimously to sheetrock it. And, honey, she sheetrocked, and she's pretty. But I got news for you. Whether it's sheetrock or whether it's paneling, there ain't going to be none of that in glory land, and I'm not going to get upset about it. Hello, and I ain't worried about blue carpet, red carpet, green carpet, because one day when I get to heaven, I'm going to walk on pure gold, transparent, see right through it. Honey, I hope you understand some things. So many of God's people have not been discipled because of easy Elizabeth. Come and go, do what you want, have it your way, and that is not of God. Right, right. I'm going to tell you something. Ruth made all these decisions, and she made all these statements, and then later in the book of Ruth, we'll find out she lived it out. Whew. And because she did, hallelujah, yeah. I'm getting excited right here. I was weak a while ago, but I believe I could charge something right now. Thank God for the Spirit of God. But old Ruth, she met the kinsman redeemer. Amen. Hello, she met him. And not only did she meet him, he married her. Right. And not only did he marry through the ancestry, you will find out our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came from that. It became of a decision she made in her heart, and she didn't just say it, she lived it out. If I could say anything, any, anything to us as Christians today, we need to live it out. It's easy to talk it out, but how about living it out? Hello? 
I thought this would be a great message of excitement this morning, but I believe some of us are getting burnt. <laughs> I just get that feeling of conviction burning in the tarry this morning. But I tell you, there's good news a little bit. We're going to have an invitation. You can get it right. Amen. You can get it right. You can get it right. Let's notice something else right here. I'm about to get close to done. Number four, the fourth point, verse 16. <laughs> Thy God, my God. We got so many denominations, so many factions, so many fictions. The Bible says over there in one place in the New Testament, don't let no schisms be in the church. This denomination believes this, and this denomination believes this, and this denomination believes this, and this denomination believes this. Hey, denominations man made. Right. Yep. 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 The only time I see Baptists mentioned in the Word of God was John the Baptist. And there's one other in there, the Presbytery, because Timothy was told by Paul, remember the hands that was laid on you by the Presbytery. Hmm? Where's the rest of them? And were those denominations? Thy God, my God. Hey, you cannot serve other gods. Right. There is one God. Amen. He's God the Father. He's a triune being. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And all three make one thick one. Yeah. Try to divide them, you cannot. He said, my God, your God, my God. You know what? That tells me something else right there too, Charlie. <laughs> I ain't got time to preach all this. I got two more messages to preach tonight. I hope I'll wear out, uh, uh, stay before I can. You know what that's telling me right there? Thy God, my God. She's serious about it. It also tells me something about Naomi that we don't really see right here. I want to bring this out. Hadn't even really thought about it. God just put it on my mind right now. I love it when he does it. Her husband and her two sons and herself went to Moab to be there just a little while. Her husband and her two sons died. Naomi is the only one out of those four allowed to go back home. Wonder why she didn't die over there. She had a witness probably for the true God of Israel. And it was such a strong witness that even Ruth said, huh, I'm going with you. And your God will be my God. Because there's something about your God. Even through all this calamity, you've lost your husband, you've lost your children, but you didn't quit church. Hello? You yeah. lost your husband, you lost your children, but you didn't quit believing in God. Right. How many does that today? I've had them in my ministry say, I'm mad at God. My spouse died. I'm mad at God. My children died. I'm mad at God. I ain't going back to church. Well, you can be mad at him if you want to. But it don't change the fact that God does whatever God does and God can do whatever God wants to do. Yeah. A lot of times we have questions we don't understand. Hey, it's okay to have questions don't understand. But keep trusting him. Amen. Let's notice this next point. Verse 17, where thou diest, will I die. Now, that's pretty strong right there. I've had them in my ministry. <laughs> oh, yes, I have. <laughs> Preacher, I love to hear you preach. And I'll tell you right now, till I die, I'm going to be right with you. <coughs> I've heard that. And some of the ones I've heard it from were that today. You don't know who they are. I do. If they ain't here, I'll tell you that much. Some of them told me that at my other church. They ain't here. And they got to where they wasn't there. <laughs> Hello? I'm saying it's awful easy to say it. But how about living it? Guess what Ruth did? She lived it. Where thou diest, I will die. You know what that tells me? That as a true believer in Jesus Christ, 
one of the ways you prove your discipleship is a lifetime commitment to walk with God. My plans, now God may have different plans, but my plans, you see, Caleb, I took this call that he placed upon my life to preach very seriously, Brother Marty. I ran from it hard, but I took it so seriously, Tim, that when I yielded to the call, Brother Roland, when I got right there to where I, I mean, I couldn't go no other way. You know what I'm talking about, brother. Life was just a mess if it did and didn't. It didn't make, I mean, when you're out of the will of God, ain't nothing going to be right. It ain't going to work right. Everything I went at backfired. Why? Because God had his hand on me. And every now and then, he'd squeeze a little tighter. He'd squeeze a little tighter. Till finally he had me where I didn't think I could handle it no more. And honestly, I didn't. But I made a commitment to him, Sister Ima Jean. I said, Lord, I'm going to tell you just exactly how Joey done it. I said, Lord, you're calling me, and I know that you are. I'll go. But I'm glad he answered the buts, too. I remember it just as sure as I'm standing right here today. I said, but God, I'm not able. I still ain't, but he is. I said, but God, I don't know all about the Bible. I've learned more since, but I still don't know it all, but he does. He said, don't worry, I'm the author of it. I said, but God, I don't want to be scared when I step into the pulpit. I just don't want to be scared. He said, I got it, and I can honestly say to you, and it's by God and not from me. I've heard a lot of preachers say every time I step up to preach, I'm scared to death. I would be, but God took the butt and said, I'll take it away. And I've never stood scared, not one time. Amen. It ain't me, it's God. I'm reverence to him. And I try to, uh, if you say fearful of his moving. But I'm not scared to stand and try to proclaim his word. And I said, God, I can't look after people. I can't even talk to them good. He said, don't worry about that. I called you to preach. I said, but God, if you put me in a church somewhere to make a pastor out of me, you know, you got to sort of talk with people and be around people and visit people and do things for people. He said, you do what I called you to do. I'll take care of the rest. And he has. Amen. And he has. What I'm saying is this. Ruth says... Where you die, I'm going to die. And I have also, when I prayed that rolling, I said, now, Lord, one other thing. Let me go as hard for you. Let me run as hard for you as I ran from you. And let me tell you something. About the first five or six years I was in the ministry, I thought, Lord, I'm going to run to death. I had a stretch one time. I had about four or five weeks straight revival. One right after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. You talking about, and I was a whole lot younger then. And by that fourth week, I was dragging. But you know what? God said, I got it. I'll just hold you in my hand when you ain't able to walk. You say, what's all that got to do with anything? I made a commitment to him. Here's the problem today. We don't have many committed Christians right. anymore. Yep. Commitment ain't always when he's God on the mountain. Amen. The commitment really shows up when he's God in your valley. Right. Hmm? Let me tell you something about valleys and mountains. When you're on the mountaintop for the Lord, if you were in battle, that's the position you want to fire upon the enemy, isn't it? You want to be higher than everybody else. You want to have the advantage. Am I right? Yes. If you're on the mountaintop today, Christian, you need to be doing something for the Lord. You need to be firing at the enemy, and the enemy is devil. You need to be trying to let your light shine that others may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. If things are good and you're on the mountain, you need to be fighting a good fight of faith, and you need to be trying to witness and tell others about Jesus Christ. Hello. But there'll come a time you'll be in the valley. Yeah. In the valley, you know what you got to do there? You're vulnerable. The enemy's on high. 
firing at you. You're in the enemy. You're vulnerable. But I tell you, there's some good things about the valley. <laughs> there's some good vegetation. There's water when you're thirsty. There's food when you're hungry. And there's some cover you can hide behind while you're getting fired upon. There's times when you say, Lord, when I've got the greatest of help and I feel the best, I'm going to fight for you. But even when I ain't so good and I can't go like I used to could, I'm still going to live for you. Amen. You see, Brother Tim, I can only speak for me this morning. But I know what he did for me when he saved me. And I know how serious it was when he called me. And like Ruth, I have decided staying home for me ain't no option. I understand if I got sick real bad and couldn't, I understand. But that ain't the decision I want to make, Peggy. As long as there's breath in this body, I want to try to praise the Lord with it. As long as there's life in this body, I want to try to tell others about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Finally, it's God's outline. Well, I'll be buried. It wasn't finally, but next step. It says, where, I, where you'll be buried, I'll be buried. You know what that tells me? Ruth was willing to say that when it's time for me to be buried, I'm going to be buried where you're buried. In other words, Ruth is saying, I hope that when that time comes and I'm buried, that I can leave a testimony behind that I truly did live for the Lord. It's getting real serious. Lori, would you come get the invitation ready? I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. One day when you die, and hey, it's not if, it's when. What you going to leave behind? You ever thought about it? Some of you think, well, I'm going to leave this young in this land, and this young in this car, and this young in this possession, and this young in my guns, and you know, you, too many of you worried about what you're going to leave. You know why you're too worried about what you're going to leave? Because you're too tangled up in what you got. I tell you, if you want to leave something behind, if you want to leave something that'll stand, because let me tell you something. If I had $12 million, Christy, and I put you in my will that when I died, you get it. Now, Heidi and the rest of them would be mad. <laughs> and I can't do that. Plus, I ain't got $12 million anyway. I'm just saying. Because she's up front. <laughs> if I had $12 million and I died before you did and I had it in my will that you and Marty received my $12 million, y'all would have y'all one big fun time for a while, wouldn't you? <laughs> but you know who'd get the benefit of that $12 million? But you know what I'd rather do? I'd rather leave behind a testimony. That'll love God, that'll serve God, and that'll stood for the truth no matter what. Didn't take sides with nobody. I just preached the word of God and tried to main tr remain true unto my master. And that testimony would still preach years after I'd be dead and gone. You say, well, you're a preacher. Uh-uh, it goes to you too. You can leave a testimony behind that you love the Lord, that you served him with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul. And that you loved your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, upon these two do the rest of the law and the prophets hinge. What do we leave behind? Finally, seventh point. I'm going to finish. It's God's outline. The Lord do so to me. You know what that tells me? <laughs> you say it but don't walk it, get ready to go to God's whipping post. God, get your attention. I'm a recipient of it. Listen to me today. God can get your attention. You say, well, preacher, I've heard you say that before, and I've lived and lived and done and done and done and done. Yes, you have. But I'm going to tell you again. One more time, this old preacher's going to sound it out. Get ready. God will get your attention attention and you ain't gonna like it you ain't gonna like it 
Listen, I ain't trying to get people, I ain't trying to get people here to this altar. I'm not trying to drag you up here. But I'm telling you this. This was God's outline. Seven steps of discipleship. Once you're truly saved, what you'll do as a Christian. They is people that is members of this church. I've been here now. I'm going on my 10th year. Some of you I've never seen at this altar. Maybe you're good. Maybe your life's perfect. Now you're talking it, but you ain't walking it. Lost person, first thing you got to do before you can get into the rest of these steps, you got to say, I believe I'll go with God. Amen. You got to be saved. You got to be born again. Then these other steps will follow. I have learned in my ministry how to find a mature Christian. What is it, preacher? Share the secret. I will. When somebody can be come against, can be talked about, can be run down, can be handled wrongly, and still get up and say, I love God and I'm still here. That's a mature Christian. It's been good to be here. I'm going to ask us to stand all over the house. If you're here and you're lost, you need to be saved. Christian, if things ain't right with you, this altar's open again. It always is. While she plays, whatever the need may be, I'm right here if you need me. The Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are directed by the Lord. How about it? Would there be anybody here today that's lost without Jesus Christ? You want to make that step of faith? Then I encourage you to come forward right now and make that step. It's your invitation. It's your time. God's speaking to you once again. The God of all creation is speaking to you and offering you eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. But you've got to make that decision. I believe the invitation is sufficient. Appreciate you coming to the Lord's house today. Anybody got a word for the Lord before we go? Brother Joe asked if you would say something about my testimony. Brother Mike Martin's wife came to my meetings. Charlotte said, I knew every child and what they raised up. Went over to the hospital one night. About two or three days before she died. Dr. Summerhill.
him is shown. Amen. Thank you very much for that. Amen. Amen. Thank you for all the other things you've seen to me too. Without him, I'm nothing. Amen. And I thank you for that. So place the rule of food on the table, a roof over my head, and shoes on my feet. Remember all these that we mentioned that need prayer. Don't forget tonight the service at 6 o'clock. Come be with us if you can. We're looking for a good time in the Lord. Pray for us. I need your prayers. My primitive Baptist is coming out tonight. I got two messages to preach. And Lord willing, I'm planning on preaching both of them. I ain't going to go to bed tonight and take God's whipping. Well, I think I got two, though. <laughs> but anyway, it's been good to be in God's house. Come be with us tonight if you can, 6 o'clock. If not, Lord willing, we'll see you next appointed time, Wednesday night. Do remember these that are sick need a touch from above. Brother Charles Vernon, would you dismiss us in prayer? <laughs>